Hey everybody, so I wanted to take a little bit of time and talk about quadrupeds and we're going to focus a little bit on some some run animations. Um, and so I want to focus on two poses. We got this, this sort of this stretched out pose and then this squashed in pose, which I think are really two of the, the biggest um, poses that we really need to, to think about in the run. Because this is like a, a huge dif difference between these two, right? Um, and so we go look at like some reference. We see this happening in, in most quadruped poses. We have this really stretched out pose. And I like to think of these two masses. We get this mass of the, the pelvis, right? And this mass of the rib cage. And like the distance um, apart that they, that they are, right? The, like the, the, the pelvis is stretched way back here. The rib cage is right way up here. And if I look at the distance this whole body covers, like the tip of the claws here, all the way to the tip of the feet, that's a really big range, right? And then we get this next, which, so that's, if that was the stretch pose, then we get, well, let's go back here where we can see it a little bit earlier. We get this compression pose, and it's probably a little bit before that, let's say like right about there, right? And this is the the opposite. This this pelvis and this rib cage are sort of squashing together. So those are the two masses that can't really change shapes. And the skull is the third one, right? Like if, if there's changed shapes that causes very serious harm to the creature. But all of this area in between, the stomach, the you know that area there, like that's kind of more squishy, and we can get like a little bit of a, a malleability in that, right? Um, and then we also look at this difference of like the legs, like the feet are actually reversed now. The back feet are in front of the front feet, right? And so if we can define those two poses, we can get a lot of what's happening in a run cycle. So we get this, this stretch pose, and we get this pose here. And I think the thing I want to talk about is how much people sometimes play this a little too safe, right? So like with our stretch pose, I, um, I get my, my character to this doesn't crash on me. There we go. I get my par character my, to my stretch pose, and I want you to notice what I've what I've had to do here, right? I I have not only stretched the these IK controls apart, and that's one really big note about this. Like, to for a um, for quadruped creatures, you want to or quadruped rigs, you usually want to keep um, the spine in some variation of IK. Right, um, that's going to allow you to manipulate both the back end and the front end individually. Right, and then the other thing is um, push the distance as much as you can. So I've, I've stretched this. Right, maybe you can stretch it even further. Right, but one of the things I'll do is I'll push my feet to their extent. So maybe I'll push them to like to this to where like I'm, I'm actually I'm getting IK pop there and then I find ways of getting my leg to actually adapt to that maybe I maybe I push my um, you know this control a little bit and get a little bit of rotation on it like I, I really just want to make sure I am pushing this as much as I can in order to get um, as much reach on this as I can like you know maybe I'm going a little too far and I end up having to pull back just a touch um, to where we, you know, we're not um, hyperextending the leg. Uh, here's another element here that I could actually probably rotate a little bit um, to get a little bit more distance on that. Right? So there's lots of things I can adjust on this, but I really want to push it. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm not leaving these paws just like completely stiff. Right? Like I, I want to go in here, grab these these controls on the individual fingers. Right? Um, and add just maybe a little bit of a little bit of curl to those, right? Um, <clears throat> I also have like the ability to do that with the whole front of the foot, right? Um, that little bit of malleability in the toes is really going to make a difference, and it's going to allow us to do you know, stuff in this to offset stuff and 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 make it feel a little bit more. Um, uh, loops because those feet are going to start to feel very stiff otherwise and so getting those you know that rotation on the toes on all of these um, just to break up some of that that pose is really important um, so I'm get that a little bit better right 
Um, and just to like loosen that up. Uh, so the same in the front, you know, I can I can stretch the the front forward and back, whatever. But I want to stretch it to where this this makes you know as, as big of a pose as I can, and then pull my feet as far forward. And I want to hyper extend them, and then try to find ways of getting my my upper arm my clavicle to reach for that and, and get that bend in there um, and again it's maybe not always going to be possible but I think that that's going to really force you to push your pose and you'll see like the difference between this pose and where we started earlier like I, I was able to stretch it just a little bit the other thing to notice in this um, in this run that we were looking at earlier like it's the same as we would have in like a dog run right that we get this this stretch forward here but notice that it's not a symmetrical stretch right one foot is um, you know the back two feet are maybe close to the same but one foot at front paw is going to hit earlier than the other um with the cheetah it's actually a mirror of this it's the uh the cheetah's um looks like the cheetah's right paw was hitting first and this is the dog's left paw i don't i don't know if there's a dog or a, a, a quadruped left right dominance um, thing happening there but um, but that is a big part of that too that what we will get in that animation is one paw hitting just a little bit earlier than the other and so maybe I do that by maybe I show that like like this you know maybe I just push this one up a little higher right? um, now my my squash pose is the opposite right um, it is those two pieces pushed together and I want you to notice like the rotation of these so right now um, this is rotated down this way right? and this is rotated down this way right? um, the other end of that the stretch pose is sort of the opposite this is up and this is up right? and so what we're getting out of that is sort of this this mirror of, um, or not, or not this mirror, this reversal of those those shapes, right? So for my stretch, I have let's do a color that's not blue. Um, let's do red. So for the hips, I get you know, this shape here, and it is you know, rotated back this way, right? Um, and then for this, I get and I'll rotate it up this way. And so what that means is the way these connect is kind of like this. And it's stretching that malleable part through the middle and making it a little bit a little bit thinner, right? Versus my frame seven here, where I will add another drawing. And you'll be able to see the sort of the inverse of that happening, right? This is rotating down this way. This is rotating down this way. And we're getting this sort of bunching up of all of that that mashed up areas there. And we'll probably get a bunch up that's a little bit more like that, like a little bit of a, a bean shape, right? And so we're flipping back and forth between the stretched out, scrunched in. Right? Um, the other thing I would I would have you look at in this is throughout that whole pose, if I delete that entire drawing, I'll go ahead and delete this one as well. Um, throughout these whole poses, we're getting uh, a line of action that's going through here, right? So we're getting this like kind of this sine wave that goes through my my character, right? And we're actually still getting it here too, right? If we if we look at this, um, we're still getting a little bit of a a sine wave that goes through the character, right? And really, what we have is if we have this this sine wave drawing and we just translated it off in this direction right we would see that ripple that wave going through the character as it ran right um so let me go back to here go and color one as well so those are the two things we're kind of looking at here now on this on this drawing again in the same way that i pushed the stretch here i'm going to push the squash here how far back can I move my character's feet? You know, how far back can I um, grab this control and push it back this way? How far forward can I push this this way, right? Um, now I have these two IK controls that allow me to ch you know, change each end of the character's spine 
right? I can even translate that up and down a little bit. And then this middle control allows me to kind of change how that spine works, right? Um, you know, I, th I think we also need like a, a little bit of a squash and stretch in here. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll sort of worry about that later. Um, I like to, to sort of add some more volume or reduce some of the volume. So we get this really big um, change in shape, and this is where that kind of allows me to, to adapt that. Um, we also have sort of an IK control on the, the neck and the head as well. Right? So once we have that, it's really those contacts that happen in between there. So we have, have here, and we have the point where the character's feet are down on the ground. And you'll notice that what happens in this is the character's hips go up a little bit, right? Um, while these others will probably go down just a little bit, right? Like that. And then that's going all the way through. And then these hips on this next one, where the back feet are on the ground, will go down. And these will go up, right? So we're kind of getting these, these two feet up and down poses here, right? And that's going to get you a lot of what you need from there. So if we watch that run, like that's that's not everything, but that's a lot, right? Um, we're going to still need like a point where these feet hit the ground. So there's probably like a contact pose here somewhere. And what I would encourage you to do is really like from this point on, really think about um, this end of a motion trail here, this arc that the character's feet are making, right? Um, that that is going to be a lot of um, it's going to define a lot about what is going on with your character so um, again I can this is a I broke I broke my loop by changing my contact pose but if I do that you'll get to see that and what we want to really do is try to break you know like right here the feeder the back feet are starting to come off the ground right so for a few more frames here, I want to get to that point to right before it kicks off the ground, right? So maybe, maybe frame 12, let's try frame 12. Um, Q, Q. I'll maybe zero out all that information, um, move those two feet back to as far back as I can. Let's see what that looks like. Hit, traveling back, and then they kick up. Uh, I still need to bark a little bit on those toes. Uh, and I'm not sure that's. I need the ball. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to play around with this a little bit. Um, and that's going to make that feel like we're continuing to hold that contact all the way through that run, and then this kick off. And if it kicks off to there, and that means like it's not going to start going straight forward. We're probably going to have those feet come up just a little bit more, right? Um, and like it may take you literally having to do every frame of this motion to to get this to to do exactly what you want it to do, right? Um, but let's see. But this will then get us a nice clean arc. Um, so, like, to me, right here, my guess is the feet would probably start to go down a little bit more. Um, I'm also going to have to make some accommodations for those those front paws. So, you know, those, are, those are still a work in progress. Um, but really tracking those arcs to make sure that those feet are doing what I want them to do throughout this entire run. All right? So, hopefully that makes sense um, and that this has been somewhat helpful. Um, a couple of things to point out, like, although I will pose in the tail, the tail and the ears and things like that are always sort of a last minute thing. Not last minute, like one of those later steps. And then the other thing is that there is a lot of up and down in this. There's also a lot of, um, in these controls, there's also a lot of rotation. And if you look at it from above, sometimes there's even a little bit of rotation in this direction with it. And a little bit of this, like this feeling that you're getting a little bit of this arc happening. And so um, that happens a little bit more in like walks than it does in runs. 
Um, but just make sure you're addressing all of the rotations and all of the translations for this and, and thinking about what every one of them are doing. And then making sure that this doesn't stay too static. This is, this is the thing that allows you to make this character feel more malleable. And so um, really pushing that is, uh, is going to help you. So hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions. And I, I, um, I'd love to see uh, some of the animations you make with this. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.